Data security breaches are an increasingly common and costly problem for organizations. Yet there are critical gaps in our understanding of the role that stakeholder relationship management and crisis communication play in relation to data breaches. If we are to understand how stakeholders react to different situations, I argue there are important and often complex relationships between organizations, stakeholders, and issues that affect what messages can be effective, as well as the practical outcomes for organizations to different types of crises. In this study, we identify a typical response strategy to data breaches, and then evaluate the role of this response in comparison to situation, stakeholder demographics, and relationships between stakeholders, the issue, and the organization using an experimental design. This experiment focuses on a two type of organization by two prior knowledge of breach risk with a control group design. Findings suggest that rather than employing reactive crisis response messaging, the role of public relations should focus on proactive relationship building between organizations and key stakeholders. When we put this study together with context, our argument is that we already know both in terms of the particular study and overall that the situation will influence stakeholder attitudes. However, we also know that across the last 50 years of study in risk and crisis communication, there are a lot of factors that can affect the pathway between a situation and how stakeholders react to it. Our goal is to better understand those in the context of the data security breaches. The question, what does a typical response to a data breach look like? We answered this way. In the UK, we looked at 27 data security breaches and analyzed those between January and October 2019. And the result was a mixed tactic approach that uses accommodative, framing both the situation and the organization, introduces organizational excellence, and an inter-organizational collaboration approach typifying how organizations responded to data security breaches. The first question to ask is what factors make the typical data breach response most effective? We found that material blame, that is the objective categorization of blame, in combination with the industry meant that a doctor's office that had the latest technology and a positive pre-crisis reputation accounted for about 17% of the variance alone. In this case, it suggests that not only is it about taking preventative measures, but the effectiveness of the response will also be based on the type of organization and the pre-crisis reputation. Second, we explored the factors most influencing people's intention to use the organization post-crisis, accounting for about 30% of the variance with the combination of material blame and industry, along with pre-crisis reputation as the significant predictors. In this case, behavioral intention was lowest when it was a bank who knew that there was a risk to the data security of their customers' accounts and did not take measures to fix the problem, and it was the highest when it was a GP's office that wasn't aware there was a risk but still had the latest technology, and that significantly affected post-crisis behavioral intention. But pre-crisis reputation was also critical. Third, in exploring the factors influencing the reputational threat a data security breach would have on organizations, we found that the most damage occurred when the organization was not viewed as competent to handle data security threats, and especially damaging for GP surgeries who knew that there was a threat and didn't take preventative action. So a doctor's office that fails to safeguard their patient's privacy has the most to lose in terms of reputation. However, interestingly, Reputational threat was also amplified when the participants themselves had a high level of self-efficacy regarding their ability to safeguard themselves against data security breaches. So let's bring this back to the big picture. But let me say first, nothing about the messaging influenced behavioral intention nor reputational threat. When all the factors were put together, the single factor that made the most difference was pre-crisis reputation even more than crisis response, institutional type, material blame, or competence in an overall regression model. Now, while this study is only based in the UK and relevant to data security breaches, I think it does force us to ask the question 
as to whether or not the field of crisis communication overemphasizes post-crisis response and doesn't put enough support into risk reduction, issues management, and pre-crisis reputation building. While a post-crisis message is always going to be necessary and appropriate, it may not be the most relevant action to take in ensuring that consumers and stakeholders both like and will use the organization after a crisis. This has meaningful implications on the field and the emphasis that we place on resources allocated before, during, and after crises. 